Here in Denmark, the weather often looks like this. Or sometimes like this. So this is why I decided to rent a $45,000 telescope to take a single picture of M81. The telescope I decided to rent is this one. This is a Planet Wave telescope. It's a 0.43 meter telescope, so quite large. Um, for Maybe not that large for a professional telescope, but for our purpose here, it should be more than enough. I managed to find this specific telescope here on their homepage. We can see it's a 22,500 just for the optical tube. Now, we don't have any cameras or filter wheels or trackers or anything on it. Um, almost 3,000 millimeter focal length with an f-stop of 6.8. The specific camera we'll be using is this one. This is a Moravian C361000 Pro CMOS sensor. It costs just over 6,000 euros. And I think this is the mount that the telescope is sitting on. This should give us a total cost for the entire setup of around $45,000. Luckily for us, they have listed all the stats that we need on the homepage. So we can see both the telescope's location, we can see the cameras listed here, the field of view is listed, camera orientation, the binning, and everything is basically listed that we need here. And most importantly, we can also see down here, they'd also list that they have calibration frames because you can actually get your pictures pre-calibrated. So when you get the, when I get the pictures, they're gonna be calibrated already with bias darks and flat, so I don't have to do that. Basically gonna sort this by magnitude so that we get the brightest galaxy at the top and then go down the list. Now in terms of size, the field of view of the lens is maximum 0.7 degrees. So if we go in here and we take, let's say 30 arc minutes, there we go, we can see that one of the best targets available here would be uh, M81. We can actually just go and plot it into the location. We can see here, uh, okay, we have a 20 degree horizon. So it's, it's a little low on the horizon, um, but it should be fine. We're definitely still above the horizon for the majority of the night. We can also just quickly go in here to the telescope simulator to try and simulate what the frames should look like when we get them out. So if we just say there was around 3000 millimeters, we're gonna simulate it with a full frame camera. And the sensor orientation was 268.7. Let's make that 270. So 270, like that. So this should be what we're expecting to see um, when we get it. Let's actually frame it up very, very nicely. We get a bit of borders around it, but framing-wise, I think um, M81 is our target of choice. It's nice and bright, so we don't have to expose for so long. Now, because I don't know how long we can expose per subframe, uh, I'm going to run an experiment basically where I just set up a plan where we try different exposure length and just to see how long we can expose without blowing up the sensor completely. So I set up the plan on my phone. It's been submitted. So now all we have to do is wait and hope for the best. One day later. That is substantially less than the 16 I was expecting. I think we have a log file. Yeah, we have a log file for the telescope as well to see what went wrong here because clearly something hadn't gone according to plan. Reading through the log, everything seems fine. We can see it's starting to target M81 as we wanted to. We can also see that it's begin to slew and it slews to the target. It should start an autofocus. We can see the autofocusing is running here and tries to slew, so it kind of, I think I need to figure out how these uh, autofocus things, because I think it takes a picture, slews to a bright star, autofocuses, slews back, and then slews back and forth between each frame. I don't want to do that. It seems that's what it's doing, at least when I read the lock. Um, but we can see here that it's it's trying to do its plate solve, um, and it finds no stars in the plate solve, and then it just runs into a script error where it says too many failures to plate solve, the scope appears to be lost. <laughs> so, so it aborts the plan after that. So something is clearly wrong. Okay, let's take a look at some of these files that it did manage to take. And let's see what we can actually do. I just opened it up in GIMP here. Um, okay, so we do have something here. We have a peak in here. It's very narrow. Um, and this is just a single sub. So I'm just going to be a little aggressive here. Trying to pull out. But I don't really see... I don't really see a whole lot in here. To be honest... Um, I'm going to try to stretch this out a little bit. Again, I'm not too worried about making a good stretch or anything like that at this point. Okay, so even after stretching this beyond what you would normally consider to be sane, I still got nothing but noise in here. I have recreated the plan, and we're just going to basically try to submit it again, get the time slot in, and we're going to click Create. Several days later. 
So it looks like it finished the luminance and the red this time, but no, none of the other, other channels. Um, let's go and investigate what happened here. What happened here was I basically reserved too little time. So this is the 180 seconds uh, luminous channel. And um, I can see, I don't know how well that's gonna show up on the recording, but I can see a faint smudge in there. But we definitely got some, uh, definitely got some light here. Got a satellite passing through here, which is kind of annoying. I wonder what satellite it was actually. Oh, there we have it. <laughs> Look at that. Let me just pause it here. I just set my Stellarium to the telescope location and the time of the exact frame, and there we have the satellite. And it's Elon Musk. Thank you, Elon. Take a look at this. These are, just done a quick test. Look at this, this is my blue channel. Like these are some of the best that I've managed to get in the blue. We can't do anything with that. Like, this one even has star trails. I don't know what happened there. Somebody bumped the telescope. But a lot of these just, it's just clouds. It's been a month. <laughs> it's taken forever. And the big problem I've been facing with this problem is when I decided to target M81, it was a month and a half ago. The observation window on M81 has been shrinking and shrinking and shrinking and so tiny now that I can basically get a few hours of observations in a night if there's a time slot available there. So I decided to swap over to IC342 which is another galaxy relatively bright, but where it would not only be a lot higher in the sky, but it will also be a lot larger observation window, giving me a lot more flexibility. And look at this. These are my luminance frames here. Uh, we are on an auto stretch right now. And these are a lot nicer, a lot clearer, no clouds. There's a few satellites here and there, but we can deal with that. It's another one. I was sitting over on the channel's community Discord server just chatting with people as I was going through trying to get a decent stack out of first the M81 and, and later the other galaxy here. And the final result... I know this is not the best or brightest picture that's ever been taken, but I am actually quite happy with how this turned out. And for something that I took in just a single night, or not even a full night, just only half a night, I think I ended up using a, a three hour time slot, so I probably have a little bit over two hours of, of total exposure time on this. It's not bad. I kind of like the outcome. I think it came out quite nice. But as fun as this has been, I don't see myself using this a lot in the future because it takes a lot of the joy out of it for me, to be honest. This feels a little bit like cheating. If you just go and rent time on a big professional telescope that's already sitting in a bottle one sky somewhere, and you just get the pictures shipped to you over the internet, it feels a little cheating to me. Could I say that I took this picture? Probably not, to be honest. It feels more like if you if you order takeaway and you just take it out of the plastic box and arrange it nicely on, a, on an actual plate, would you then say that you cooked Probably not. It's kind of the same deal that we that we have here. I feel like, yeah, it's fun. And if you just need some some data, maybe you want to see a target that you can't see from your um, from your location. Maybe it's on the southern hemisphere. Then I could see maybe renting a telescope could be a viable option. But for me personally, I think it takes too much of the joy out of it for, to be something that I would would do on a recurring basis. I'm not saying I won't come back to it in the future, but. I still miss that, you know, being out in the dark, getting everything up and running and, and trying to overcome all the challenges that astrophotography does pose. Point this straight up like so. Then get a tablet with a pure white image and simply just put that 
the mount is rated for up to 13 kilograms of, uh, of payload for observations and 10 kilograms for, uh, for astrophotography. 